Hey everyone. How's it going? So what am I working on now? Yep. If you see it right. That is a Mitsubishi Expo. That has been sitting obviously for a long time. Doesn't run. <laughs> Customer brought it in, had a towed in, and said, it's got 188,000 miles on it. I don't even know what year it is. I've got to figure that out. Customer towed it in, said it has a fuel leak. When you try to put fuel in the tank, it leaks out. That's what they want us to fix, and only that. They don't want anything else done. Okay. At least take a look at it. I don't even know if you get parts for this thing. I don't know what year it is. Let me look and see if I can figure out what year this thing is. All right, so it's a 92 Mitsubishi Expo. So let's put it up in the air and let's take a, do a visual before we try putting any fuel in this thing. It's probably been 20 years since it had any fuel in it, but let's just take a quick visual first before we make a mess with fuel in the shop. <laughs> Okay, so up underneath this treasure, uh, here we can see this tire's got a little bit of dry rot in it. See that? Not bad. Not bad. Just a little bit. Uh, this tire, yeah, got a little bit of dry rot in it too. But somebody probably changed it while it was sitting in the parking lot. There you see fuel stains coming down. And they're not from the fuel neck. So I'd be willing to bet the tank is probably rotted. Very good possibility. Uh, let's see, it's still got a catalytic converter on it. It's a used or an aftermarket one. And it's still got stuff in it. But uh, let's see, there's no exhaust pipe here. Probably had another catalytic converter. This tire's also got a little bit of dry rot. Yeah. The steering rack's leaking and it's not even running. Yeah, this, this tire, this tire, uh, I got a funny feeling this tire won't pass inspection. Just my guess. Hmm. All right. So maybe what we're going to do is get a little gasoline and put in it. I'd be willing to bet it's leaking up there at the tank. All right, guys, let's add some gas for this. New gas cans suck. Well, FYI. I shouldn't say the gas can sucks. The filler neck, they're the filler pipe thingy. Terrible. Looks like it's just a rubber hose. I think if we get a replacement piece of rubber hose, I think that'll solve the problem. All right. Looks like the rubber hose is leaking, but getting to it is not gonna be fun. It's in a bad spot. It is, oops, hold on, I'm back up here. It is above the cross member in that there and the rear suspension. Oh, okay. All 
right, so we finally got the parts in to fix this Mitsubishi. Uh, anyway, so here is the hose. I had to buy in a bulk length. Hopefully that everything's right with this. Here's some clamps right there. So hopefully everything's right and it'll work the way I want it to. And now I'm not sure, hello, oh, stay up there. Okay, I just want it to stay there for now. I'm not sure how I'm gonna get that inner clamp off. I'm gonna have to cut it somehow, but it doesn't look like a lot of fun. So let me see how I can possibly hook you up here so you can actually watch me. I'm not sure if that's even feasible, but let's see what we can do. All right, so unfortunately, this is about the best angle I'm gonna get you on. But now what I'm going to try to do is get in there with a pair of cutting pliers and cut the inner clamp. And I know my head is going to be in the way, but what are you going to do? Because I can't even see this clamp from any direction. see it better from underneath here, I don't know. You could just see it through that opening there. I don't know how well this is going to work. It's not going to work either. All right, I'm trying to get my hand up in there. Yeah, that angle is not going to work for you, I can tell you that much. All right, really not a lot you're going to see, but this is kind of what I'm going through. Just trying to rip the clamp off, and it's an old school wire clamp. are great clamps until they're not. Just remember that. Now can you see this one here? I'm sorry I'm dealing with the stupid spare tire holder that's kind of in my way too. All right. See this one you can get to. So that's all. Now what? Now what do I do? Let me get a box cutter and cut that clamp or cut that hose there, and um, then we're going to see if I can't work it off the other end. All right. So a box cutter. Whenever you're doing something like this with a box cutter, razor, whatever, be careful so you don't gouge the metal below it or plastic or whatever it might happen to be. I've seen people do that where they'll actually gouge it to the point of creating a point of leaking. Which I think I just caught that, but I don't think it was all that bad. And this stuff is just all dried up. See that? It's actually just tearing. And there's rust in there. It's falling out. 
Oh yeah, the hose is actually, hmm. you can actually see this, hang on a second. Now you can see it. On the inside there, white. If you look closely, see it? It's all just rotted away. See that? All just rotted away. So the hose just deteriorated completely. So now I'm gonna try to get that off there. Yeah, ooh, terrific. All right. Let me figure something out here. A long screwdriver, maybe? Let's find out. All right. So the noise you hear is a leaf blower. We got the wind's been blowing, kicking up, and put a whole bunch of leaves in the shop. should work its way off and yes there it is all right it's off it wasn't horrendous but that would explain why you're putting fuel in and it just poured right out all right so now what we got to do is the new replacement hose is usually kind of a pain to deal with because it's not very flexible so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the two clamps on there. I'm going to put this up here and try to get a rough measurement of what I need. All right, let me get a silver sharpie. Try to get that down as far as it'll go. Let me get a silver sharpie. I can leave these off for right now. But let me get a silver sharpie and mark this hose. Hang on a second. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the, gonna measure this a little bit longer than it needs to be. And all I'm doing is taking a silver sharpie and marking the hose. And you know, just like that. So now we get to cut this. Now this has a metal spiral wrap inside of it, I believe, like a wire. So you gotta be careful. So usually a hand hacksaw works pretty well. So let me see, I don't even know if I have one anymore. I gotta check to see. Okay, so amazingly enough, I don't have a hacksaw. That's actually not that amazing. But anyway, so I'm gonna use the Sawzall. So there you could see that wire that I was telling you about right there. So just be careful so you don't catch yourself on that because that'll give you an ouchie. All right, so with that hose cut to hopefully length. Okay, that fell. All right, so let's verify. where that's sitting on there because I can't really see it and it looks like it's bottomed out so now what I'm going to do is stick one of these I did put a touch of tranny assembly gel on the inside of these on the inside of this tube here just to make my life a little bit easier all right that's good. Let me. I just smashed my head into the spare tire rack there. 
Uh, let me get some tools so I can try to tighten that up. Hang on a minute. Alright, so let's try to sneak this in here and tighten this up. Probably going to be a pain. Yeah, this is going to be a pain. Actually, let's get it a little closer first. Hopefully, I'm not blocking you with my incredibly large cranium. Crushing down on the hose, I can see it. And I'm just about losing contact. No other way for me to go in there. There you go. I'm happy with how tight that is because it actually crushed down below the edge of the rubber. So that should be good. Uh, for this one, I really don't need a universal, but I don't feel like walking all the way over to my toolbox to get a straight socket from them right here. See it in the camera view. But usually when clamps, these are the closest I can get with the clamps. Usually when clamps like that start to tighten up, see how offset this part became, the tail? That one over there, just smashed my head again. That one there is offsetting itself, but oops. it's very difficult to see. But I could see it, it's just I can't show you with the camera, unfortunately. There's like no way to get in there. So, all right, that should be good. Let's let this beauty down. Let's put some gas in it, make sure the gas is not flowing out. Now, there is the return hose here, but I did not see it leaking. And it is the return, the vapor part return. So all you wanted to do is fix the fuel leak. I can only do what customers want me to do. So. I can only fix what they want me to fix. So we're going to address that if it starts to leak. But as of right now, I didn't see it leaking. So this car's a long ways off from being running. So if I showed you everything, you'd be amazed. Let me give you a quick look. Quick look just so you can see. I think I showed you this already. But there is no exhaust leading up to there. And then... There's no radiator. There's no other goodness underneath there. So, and the tires are hammered. No, it's a long ways off from being a roadworthy vehicle. So, sometimes you got a question: Why do customers want you to do certain things? I don't know. Well, whatever. That's what they want us to do. That's what we did. Let's put some fuel in it. All right. So let's put in some fuel. If you remember last time, I put in about that much. I start pouring out all over the place. Let's go up and let's take a look. All 
All right, looks good from here. It's dry, no leaks. I'm good with that. All right. Perfect. Well, the customer can tow it back home now or wherever they have it. Um, yeah, so that's it. All right. Maybe it's a project that he's working on and he just couldn't do that himself. I don't know. All right. Hopefully you got something out of that. If you did, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys. Have a great day. Keep friendship.